with, with respect to the video about being attracted to unavailable people, um, someone wrote in and said they'd love to have more. That was great. And they said, he said, I'm attracted to this girl at work and she's unavailable. Mm -hmm. She does flirt at times. I think that I have a limited selection of women that I really connect to. So I feel like I have to like reach out and continue exploring this. I'd love your advice. What do I do? Wow. Kathy Vartuli from the intimacy dojo.com. Read Mahako from read about sex.com. Hmm. Hmm. So there's limited people that, that this person is attracted to. Mm -hmm. So obviously flirting and connecting with this person feels delicious. Yeah. Um, but this person is unavailable. Yeah. Uh, I have advice. Do you want to go first? Go ahead. Thoughts? Um, so my thoughts are, uh, if they're, it seems like it's okay to be playful, like this person's flirting, it mm. seems right. Or, or, and again, like the definitions on flirting, what does that actually mean? Um, I would ask this person, um, you know, like that you really enjoy flirting mm -hmm. and that you would like to do more of that but that you want to be respectful of their relationship so you're just having a check-in to like where is the boundary like to figure out like how to like you know i'm i really enjoy this but i get that you're in a relationship and i just want to i want to make sure we're on the same page so that i can be respectful and and still get to be playful like whatever that is so for me flirting is just playing being playful with people and inviting them to play back it, for me, flirting can exist in a bunch of different settings. It doesn't have to be sexual. And certainly you can flirt in sexual ways um, that never have to lead to sex. Or there is an intention of let's get each other riled up for the sex. And yeah. then there's just flirting, being playful and silly and, um, and you know inviting people to be playful and silly back. That mm -hmm. has nothing to do with going towards sex. Yeah. Even if people get excited or titillated or aroused, you know, as long as you're not being creepy, it's all good. We're being playful, right? Like playing frisbee and in and throwing the frisbee back and forth can be really exciting and just leave you feeling good and vital. Um, but when people play catch with frisbees, it's not like they're courting each other. Yeah. So that's my frisbee analogy for flirting. Go. Yeah, um, and I do understand that. There's. Um, there's some people that seem to be able to connect with a lot of different people and I mm -hmm. tend to have very slight, I'm either attracted to someone or I'm not. So when I find someone, it's like, oh, I want that person. But the more people you get exposed to, the more you get out there, the more people you'll find. So whether you continue to flirt and connect with this person or not, I encourage you because they're unavailable for dating to go out and find, you know, make sure you're meeting as many people as possible mm -hmm. so that you can find other people that you're attracted to. And I know it's frustrating when there's not a lot of people out there, like the percentage is low, but that just means that you have to shine brighter and figure out what it is about them that particularly attracts you if you can. Put that in your dating profile so you can start to filter and find those kinds of people. Yeah, ultimately you're, you know, the situations that I believe, this is all my ideas and advice around dating your species, is getting very specific about those things that you know tend to be a great fit for you or what you find attractive uh, sometimes those answers are not politically correct they don't um, have to be i think that's okay and uh and then use the that specificity for when you're going out there and dating or looking for groups that kind of meet those requirements what i would call watering holes events and, and things like that mm -hmm. facebook groups where people of that ilk seem to be so that you're doing your searching there mm -hmm. in, rather than just trying to become a fit for everybody on the planet which just really isn't isn't the the best use of time and energy i think yeah um but i love the idea of are you getting are you searching uh and doing your due diligence to try to find somebody who is attractive to you and who is available. If you find that you're consistently attracted to people that are unavailable, there may be some fear or block that's getting in the way that it feels safer to be attracted to people that you couldn't actually go there with. Mm -hmm. um, so if that seems to be the case, if you see a pattern of some kind, get a coach or a therapist to help you look at that and kind of explore that or have a, you know, do some journaling, have a, have a friend help you. Yeah. 
take a look under the rug mm -hmm. on that one. Only because if there's nothing there, you're, you're fine. A little little swifter and you're clean. Yeah. Um, and if you pull up the rug and, oh my goodness, so much under there, mm -hmm. it's good that you find it now and start doing the work on yourself because that kind of work always pays off. Yeah. I, I believe. You, yeah. You, some of you might have different, uh, you know, your mileage may vary, but all the work I've ever done on myself, I think none of it was wasted. Even when I was going in the wrong direction, yeah. I went in the wrong direction to realize I needed to go here and that ended up paying off. Yeah. Cool. So leave comments below. We'd love to know what you think. Please. Thanks for watching and thanks for writing in. Mm -hmm. Thanks for tuning in, Sex Geek. If you would like to continue with the brain sex, do me a favor and click subscribe right here. If you'd like to watch me on social media, that's where you're going to go. Next video, maybe? And if you really would like your own Sex Geek t-shirt, please click right here, right now. Boop. N no, no, really, like...